劇場内ではルールを守って映画を楽しもう Welcome back to Matt's Movie Nights, where I recommend movies and we talk about them. It's Metalween, so I picked some metal movies. Starting with an amazing film that I love very much Dia de la Bestia, or Day of the Beast in English, which、uh, has kind of fucked up the cover here, because in the Spanish title, the, the devil here is supposed to be the letter I, but there's no I in this title. So, in, in English. So he's just sort of awkwardly between the S and the T. He couldn't even have made him the T. I, I think people would have understood that. On the back, they just. They, it says Day of the Beast, and he's just like in the background. That's probably what they should have done. But, whatever. It's a cool poster. It's cooler in Spanish, but it's a cool poster. So, this is a Spanish movie, in case you couldn't figure out by the Spanish title. It's the story of a Catholic priest who decides to turn evil, start doing evil things, so that eventually he can sell his soul to the devil, so that he can be at the birth of the Antichrist and kill the Antichrist. It's, it's a long con to like, get on Satan's good side so he can kill the, the Antichrist. Which, uh. If that shit doesn't sound like the raddest thing you've ever heard of, get the fuck out of my face. If you are not interested in seeing Priest Turns Evil to Fight Satan, there's nothing on my channel for you. D- just leave. So he turns up in the big city, uh. Probably Madrid? Madrid is like the, the big city in Spain, right? I'm gonna look at the back of the box and see if it says. It、uh, it doesn't say.、Um, I'm gonna say Madrid because I'm a dumb American who doesn't know any better. So he shows up in Madrid, I think, and he, he starts like, being mean to people and he teams up with this like,、uh, metalhead record store owner. See, he goes into the record store and is looking for like, Satanic metal, and the dude's like, Oh, here, you gotta listen to this. They're a local band named Satanicus. So he gets involved with, with this、uh, metalhead record executive, and there's this like TV psychic who uses like all these occult symbols and stuff in his、uh, TV show, and the, the priest sort of gets in contact with him. Actually,、uh, the priest breaks into his apartment. That's what happens. They break into his apartment and Kinda kidnap him, but at a certain point he's like, oh shit, these guys are serious. The devil is, is real, the Antichrist is about to be born, and we gotta stop the apocalypse. So at first, there's sort of,、uh, he, he's being coerced by these people, he's being detained against his will by these people. But at some point, he's like, oh, okay. No, you guys were right. I'm with you guys now. And then it ends with,、uh, you know, a big old fight with Satan. Honestly,、uh, the climax of the film is one of its weaker points. The Satan in this movie is not the most interesting. He's fine, he's acceptable. But he's, he's a little ugly, and the whole scene just has like the worst blue screen. It's, it's like horrible blue screen. But、uh, other than that, it's a really fun movie. Even that's fun. That's a f- f- fun climax. I enjoy that. But more, I enjoy just like this, this priest running around committing random acts of chaos, you know. <laughs> He does the old, like, light a cigarette, pop a balloon with it thing. I think he pops a balloon with it.、I'm, he, he lights a cigarette and hurts someone with it, I'm sure. But actually, he lights a cigarette and hurts himself with it at one point. <laughs> he, he burns, like, a cross into the bottom of his feet to, like, protect him when he goes to the devil's side, I guess. I, I, probably worth mentioning at the beginning of the film, he's figured out. 
when the Antichrist is to be born. Christmas Day, 1995. This is another Christmas movie. Last year I showed Hellbent for Metalween. This year I'm showing Day of the Beast for Halloween. Merry Christmas. Um, so it's a Christmas film. You should definitely watch this at Christmas. Uh, he's, he's figured out the Antichrist is going to be born on Christmas Day. And he's got to get in good with Satan before then. And he's, he's, like, shoving people into, like, subway stations and, and stealing from homeless people. And, uh, uh, one of the, the bad things he does is just walk away when police are beating someone up. So, uh, I, I would like to point out that this movie says ignoring police brutality is what the devil wants you to do. Oh yeah, the, the priest's name is Angel. His name is Angel. So on, on top of Angel being like an overly ironic name for this character, it's also uh, the name Martin uses throughout the majority of Shock 'em Dead. I called him Martin the whole video, but he does go by the stage name Angel. So, two angels this metal wing. <laughs> uh, I, I love the fucking metalhead dude in this movie. I... <laughs> If, if this movie were just a little more popular, I would probably go as that dude for, like, Halloween or something. Um, although, he's, he's got a pretty simple look. People might just be like, oh, that dude's a metalhead, so it's not even a costume. Yeah, it's, it's just a really fun, kind of ridiculous movie. I think that there's an element of comedy to this movie. It does play the concept pretty straight, but it's also, like, you know, it, the, there's a priest, like, shoplifting occult books and shit, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. It's, it's definitely got its funny moments. Uh, I wouldn't call it, like, goofy or silly or anything. It's, it is a genuine movie. We'll, we'll say that. It's a genuine movie. Everything about this movie, I think, is genuine. There's nothing I enjoy ironically about it. It's just a really fun movie. I I watched this last October for Metalween, because I tried to I do 31 Days of Metalween, and I watched this last year. It was on, I want to say Tubi, maybe, maybe Amazon Prime, but I want to say Tubi, and I'm like, oh, this movie's great. I gotta get a Blu-ray of it. And there wasn't a Blu-ray of it. I don't even think... I think the DVD was even out of print. So it, I couldn't get a copy of this movie. And I'm like, oh, no, I needed this for next Metalween. And Severin... Severin came through for me. Like, a month or two after I had watched this. They're like, Day of the Beast Blu-ray release! And I'm like, pre-order that right fucking now. I, I, I pre-ordered that immediately. It, even, it says on the back here, Restored on Blu-ray for the first time ever in America. So, this is the first American Blu-ray release of Day of the Beast. And I, I'm so happy. I intended to watch some of these special features and I never had time. Because October is incredibly busy for me. <laughs> but, I'm sure they're... Great special features. The movie looks great. This is a really good Blu-ray transfer. I'm very happy with this Blu-ray release. It's even got this uh, nice little slip cover. I, I always appreciate a good slip cover, even if it is just kind of the same art on both. Um, but on the back of here, they have a quote from Guillermo del Toro, who also loves this movie. He says it's one of the very best, quote, Guillermo del Toro. He, uh, the star of this movie, Alex Angulo, Alex Angulo, I, I, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, but he was in Pan's Labyrinth, um, the Guillermo del Toro movie, so he liked this movie enough to cast its lead in Pan's Labyrinth. I believe this is the first, uh, movie I have shown for Matt's Movie Nights that features a penis... But no tits. Because usually if you have penis, you're gonna have tits. Right? Like, you've already crossed the nudity threshold. Might as well put some titty in there. There's no tits in this movie. But there is a penis. 
Yeah, what else is there to say? Uh, I love this movie. Please, please watch this movie. It's amazing. I... <laughs> this is... This is one of those movies that is just, like... Perfectly up my alley. This is... This is exactly what I want out of a movie. I want Day of the Beast. Yeah, uh, Day of the Beast. Please watch it. After that, we've got another Severin release. Both of them in black cases. That's how you know it's Metal Ween. Two black cases. So this is Paganini Horror. Or Paganini Horror. I don't know. This is the story of a female rock group who find, like, an old, unreleased piece of Paganini's music. Paganini being a, a classical composer who sold his soul to Satan and, or, or did, did, like, crazy occult rituals. I'm not sure how much of that is actually true. I, I believe Paganini was a real person. And I believe there were rumors about him doing some weird occult shit, but I don't know how much of what's in this movie is true. Um, but they get a piece of his, like, like an unreleased piece of his music, and they decide they're gonna go out to this old, like, abandoned, haunted house, and they're gonna play the Paganini song there, and they, they end up resurrecting Paganini, who starts murdering all of them. So, um, it's pretty fun. It's, uh, this is an Italian horror movie from Luigi Cazzi. Uh, famous for directing... I don't know, what, he, what is he fam most famous for directing? I know him for Contamination, which was one of the video nasties. Honestly, probably one of the better video nasties. It's an alien ripoff, but it's got a lot of fun blood and guts and stuff. It was actually almost a fake sequel. He wanted to call it Alien 2, and he got talked into calling it, like, Alien Contamination. So that one won't be showing up for fake sequel month. Uh, he directed the, the Lou Ferrigno uh, Hercules movie. Oh, and the, the Seven Voyages of Sinbad? Hold on. I have it here. Sinbad of the Seven Seas, also starring Lou Ferrigno, and directed by Mr. Luigi Cazzi. Yeah, he was... Oh, wait. Hmm. Did he correct? Did he direct Star Crash? Fuck. Okay, this says written and directed by Louis Coates. That could absolutely be Luigi Cazzi. Because he's an Italian, and he uses... The, the Italians use fake names. He might have directed Star Crash. I'm gonna double check that on the internet. Okay, yeah, this was directed by Luigi Kazi. Even though on the back here it says directed by Louis Coates. That's Luigi Kazi. This is a Luigi Kazi movie. Luigi Kazi was not exclusive to horror the way a lot of his contemporaries were. He's not Fulci, he's not Argento. Uh, He's not one of the Bavas. He he branched out. He did a lot of sci-fi, honestly. This this might be like as I, I mentioned contamination. Contamination is sci-fi horror. This might be his only straight horror movie. Uh at the very least, it's the only one that I have seen that is a straight horror movie. But you know, he's got his fingers in a lot of pie. There's a lot of if you if you've seen like enough uh Cult movies, bad movies. <laughs> He's directed a lot of them. He worked with Roger Corman for a while, so he he directed some New World pictures. So yeah, if if you know his stuff, you know it's all a little goofy. It's all a little silly, and this is no exception. This is fun. It's goofy. It's silly. It's uh, I I enjoyed it. I had a fun time with it. The dub is fucking atrocious. I cannot stand this dub, but <laughs> that's just how Italian movies are sometimes. Oh fuck, I could have just looked on the back here. It says Luigi Cazzi, director of Star Crash. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> He's credited on this Blu-ray, but not the Star Crash DVD. Oh yeah! 
I know who's in this movie. I know which moderately popular actor is in this movie. Donald Pleasance. Donald Pleasance of Halloween fame. And the Puma Man. And also uh, a couple Hammer Horror movies. We talked about him in The Mummy recently. Uh, Donald Pleasance is in this movie. A surprise return appearance from Mr. Pleasance. Why did I forget he was in this movie? Fuck. Yeah, he's sort of this weird, like, occultist who sells them the the Paganini sheet music, and then at the end he shows up and is like, Ha-ha! You fell for my plot to resurrect Paganini. Got him. He's, he's got a pretty minor role in this movie. Um, other than him, there's the, the lead actress in this, Jasmine Maimon, is in Demons, which is a movie I'm definitely going to have to show for Metal Ween eventually. That is an incredible metal movie. <laughs> it's like a, a bunch of people get trapped in a theater with a bunch of demons... And the whole soundtrack is just like, like ACDC and, and Iron Maiden and Judas Priest. It's, it's like a metal soundtrack and just these demons fucking cutting people down inside a theater. Ah, uh, demons. Gotta show that one eventually. Not tonight. It's maybe next Metalween. Paganini Horror. Um, it was fun. I enjoyed watching it. But it's not much to write home about. It, it's just kind of a silly Italian horror film, right? Like, if, if you've seen a silly Italian horror film, you kind of know what to expect from this one. It, it doesn't stand out that much. But it's fun. It's a fun movie. And finally, we've got another movie I watched last October for 31 Days of Metalween. Went looking for a Blu-ray... Didn't have one, and then between the time I went looking for a Blu-ray and now, they released one. It's Heavy Trip. Heavy Trip is a Finnish comedy film, and uh, that makes this a completely foreign triple feature, which I'm very happy about because we have been very America-centric this year. That's my fault. I've been showing a bunch of Universal movies. So it, the, the the universal horror is is sort of bumping up America's numbers a lot. I've also just been showing a lot of American movies this year. So this this completely foreign triple feature, you know, uh, Spain, Italy, and now Finland. I think this is the only Finnish movie I have ever seen. I might be wrong. I might have seen one or two others, but I'm pretty sure this is the only Finnish movie I have ever seen. But you know, it's it's a metal movie that was filmed in Scandinavia. So that's how you know it is the most brutal of all metal movies. So this is the story of a band named Impaled Rectum, who live in this small town in Finland, and no one really likes them. They're, they're very much the outcasts of the town, and um, they, they meet this record... Per, not a record, a festival promoter for uh, e eternal no northern damnation it's called northern damnation which i looked that's not a real festival there is a festival in britain called damnation fest and i think the implication of the film is that this is damnation fest but in norway the the norwegian version of damnation fest but not a real metal festival but it's a norwegian metal festival which means it is the most metal festival shit goes down bad things happen and they're basically like all right fuck this we're going to that norway festival we're gonna play at that festival no matter what it takes first off they keep getting in trouble because no one likes them <laughs> and then uh their drummer dies he, he wrecks the van they'd been planning to take to, to Norway uh, and, and dies. So the, the main character works at a mental care facility. And one of the guys there is like, he, he's very prone to violence. Like he, 
he he's a very calm, collected guy, but then like on a dime he just snaps and he's attacking you. Uh, but uh, the lead character finds that like metal music helps him calm down, and not only that, he's a really good drummer. So, uh, playing drums really helps him, like, calm down, focus on something, and he's just a, a great drummer. So, they so they, they break him out of the mental institute so he can be their drummer. And they still dig up the corpse of their old drummer and bring that along with them. Uh, he's just... His, his, they, it's just the casket. You never see his dead body, but they carry the casket around with them uh, the whole movie. I think it might even be on the cover. Nope, it's not on the cover. But uh, they, they carry the casket around with them to the concert. Um, oh, and and they steal a bus from, like, a local, like, pop singer, I guess is what he is. It's a local singer, and he's, like, the popular guy everyone likes, and he's, like, trying to get in with the girl the main character has a crush on. So, you know, he's just the the very stereotypical, like, rich, popular douchebag that none of the main characters like. So they just steal his van and take that to Norway. And, uh, it gets, it gets a little goofier in the back half. Because, honestly, the thing I would compare this film to is, like, it's it's Deathgasm without the zombies. The zombies, there are no zombies in this film. There's nothing supernatural in this film. It's, it's a very grounded movie. But then, on their way to Norway, things get, like, really ridiculous. Like, because they're being chased down by the, the po a police officer from their hometown. Uh... Because he he just doesn't like them, and also they I believe it's his son's van that they steal. His dad is a cop. I mean, no, no, I take that back. It's the crush. It's the crush's father. Uh, the the girl the main character has a crush on's father is a cop, and he's chasing them down. And he tells like Norwegian border patrol like, oh, you gotta look out for these like dangerous terrorists. And about that time, some guys roll up on the Norway border, uh, at, who are having a bachelor party themed around Jesus and the Disciples, which is the weirdest fucking bachelor party theme I have ever heard of. Uh, but you know, they've all got, like, turbans and beards and, like, haha, with for Jesus and the disciples, but, you know, they look like Muslims, and it's, like, they're the ones that end up getting arrested while the the members of Impaled Rectum just get on into the country. And that whole sequence is just ridiculous, because for some reason, Norway Border Patrol has, like, a rocket launcher and, like, blows up a bunch of their own shit. And then, and then uh, once they've made it into Norway, they have to hitch a ride on a Viking ship from a bunch of LARPers. Um, which, if if you're LARPing Vikings on a beach, why do you need a boat? Where did they get that boat from? That seems like an incredible amount of effort to put into something just for, like, a, a live-action roleplay setting. But whatever, they have a real Viking ship, and they they take them to Northern Damnation on the Viking ship. And by the time they get there, the promoter is like, Guys, you are on every fucking news station right now. Which I kind of doubt, I kind of doubt that would actually happen. That, that a metal band crossing the border in a stolen van and then hitching a ride from Vikings would be all that popular. But whatever. They're like, oh, you're all over the news. Come on, you gotta play for us. So, you know, they play their one song that they write in this movie. And everyone loves it, yeah. And and they end the movie with like, oh, you'll hear from Impaled Rectum again. So I'm expecting a Heavy Trip Part 2 eventually. There better be a sequel to this, or that line is a lie. 
Uh, this this movie is funny. It's a very funny movie. Like I said, it's like Deathgasm without the zombies, which does make Deathgasm the more interesting movie to me. I enjoy Deathgasm a little more than this, but this is fun. It's a lot of fun. It's got some really funny moments. I think this one actually probably has more in-depth characters than Deathgasm. At the very least, there are more characters I like in this one. In the in Deathgasm, you have Brody, and that's about it. In this, uh, the main character is basically exactly the same as Brody. Like, he could just be Brody, and I wouldn't know the difference. Uh, but then their drummer is really funny. He reminds me a little of the fat kid from Deathgasm, but he's definitely got a lot more personality in this movie. There's, like, a, a thing early on where he, like, has a heart attack and looks dead for a minute, and then they, like, hit him in the chest and he's back alive again. And I was kind of expecting that to be a setup, because later, you know, they have his corpse at this, at, at the, the big concert. I was expecting him to, like, fall out of the casket and, like, oh, whoa, hey, I'm alive, I wasn't dead this whole time. Didn't happen. A missed opportunity, I think. I think they should have had him just abruptly come back to life in that scene. Uh, their their bass player has like a photographic memory of every song he has ever heard. So and 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 like like intense knowledge of all metal music. So he's a really funny character. There's a scene in this movie where the guitarist is trying to come up with like a new riff for their song, and like everyone he puts out. Uh, the bass player's like, oh, it sounds too much like this song, sounds too much like this song. And on the one hand, I kind of hate the, like, ooh, this sounds a little like another song, you can't do that, it's not original. It's like, dude, fuck off. It's, uh, there's already a song that sounds like whatever I'm writing. Guaranteed. Like, there's, there's a limit to how original a song can be at this point. But on the other hand, the first riff he plays is so blatantly... Walk by Pantera. I'm like, dude, everyone knows that's Walk. You, you are very obviously doing Walk. Check this out. Uh, I actually, I grew up in the same area as Pantera. They have Pantera brand beer. I think it's out of stock now. I think they were only selling it over the summer, but I saved a can just for Metalween. And I gotta tell you, this is like, the worst type of beer because it's beer that's not quite shitty enough to stop drinking like it is it is right at the line of like i could finish this right it like this isn't oh that's gross let me throw it out right now it's yeah i could finish this beer i don't really want to but i could That is incredibly mediocre beer. Thank you, Pantera. How, how is this Pantera branded? Pantera's not around anymore. Dimebag Daryl's been dead since, like, what, in 99? When did Daryl die? Fun fact, my dad was at Dimebag Daryl's funeral, and he had no clue who the guy was. My, my dad works for the news, so it was like, oh, local celebrity dead. Go cover his funeral. Anyways, that's my Pantera tangent. Um, circling back to Heavy Trip. One small problem I had with this movie that is maybe only a me problem is it felt a tad dated to me. Because to me, like, these jokes about weird, extreme metal subgenres. They, they've got it listed on the back of the, the slipcover here, which we will talk about the slipcover in a second. But but they're, the joke is, the music they play is symphonic, post-apocalyptic, reindeer-grinding, Christ-abusing, extreme war, pagan, Findoscandian metal. Uh, <laughs> and to me, I'm like, that. that reminds me of the type of humor that I would have seen circa, like, 2010, you know? 
like that it's 2010 to like 2014 time that it seems like a joke from it seems like a lot of the jokes in this movie would have fit into that time period but i think that might just be a me problem <clears throat> oh god pantera is giving me the burps I think that might just be a me problem because that's when I was in high school and I was always browsing like the metal memes board and the music memes board on uh, I Can Has Cheeseburger. It's when I was watching Metalocalypse. So it might just be that I was really into that type of humor in like 2010 to 2014 and no one else would have that problem with this movie. But to me, it reminds me of the type of humor I was very used to in high school. This is from 2018, which makes it one of the more recent movies we've shown on this show. The Austin Chronicle calls it a future cult classic, and I sure hope they're right, because I really like this movie. So this was released by Music Box Selects. Um, it's actually... Music Box Selects Spine Number 1. Information you can't actually find on the spine. It says it on the back of the box, not the spine. But not to worry, uh, this is one of Vinegar Syndrome's partner labels. So Vinegar Syndrome put out this very nice exclusive slipcover that does say Music Box Selects Spine Number 1 on it. There's that beautiful, beautiful... Uh, Vinegar Syndrome exclusive slipcover. I love this slipcover, even though it says Impaled Rectum on the front instead of the name of the movie, which is Heavy Trip. Um, I would love this on a t-shirt. I, I need this on a t-shirt, Vinegar Syndrome. Please and thank you. This actually got stolen off my porch when it was delivered. And at, at first I thought they just, like, didn't deliver it. I'm like... Because I, I was in my apartment when they said they delivered it, and I never saw it. But then, like, the next day I went out, and someone just had it on the dashboard of their car. And to just, like, sitting there, and I'm like, okay, you fucking stole that. Like, this is not a popular movie. This is a limited edition release of a, f a new, a new limited edition release of a Finnish comedy film that I guarantee this guy had never heard of. You know, if this were like Star Wars or it's Ferris Bueller's Day Off, okay, maybe that's coincidence. Maybe that guy just happened to have the Blu-ray that got stolen off my porch. But this guy, I'm like, no, you fucking stole that. Like, I can tell you stole that. No one else ordered this but me. But you should, I recommend it. I really enjoy Heavy Trip. I feel like I had something else to say about this, but I can't remember what it was. Um, the music's pretty good. It's pretty good metal. Um, it is, they, they call themselves Reindeer Grinding, and I think they are perhaps the only reindeer grinding band. The guitarist works for his dad's reindeer farm, and they basically, uh, you know, they have to, like, you know, kill and cut up the, the reindeer meat and at one point like half a reindeer gets stuck in their meat grinder and the, that's like a weird back to the future parody where he's just like hey you know the sound we've been looking for well here it is and it's just a, a reindeer corpse stuck in a meat grinder oh I was gonna talk about the festival promoter okay so the festival promoter shows up with two very questionable necklaces, right? Because at first he's got, like, an iron cross necklace. And that that's raising some eyebrows. Now, the iron cross has been used by the German army for a long, long time. It is not exclusively associated with the Nazis, but it is also, like, a subtle symbol Nazis like to wear because it has that plausible deniability, because the German army was using it well before the Nazis, the Nazis also used it, so that's sort of... You know, the Iron Cross, it's not a guarantee the guy wearing it is a Nazi, 
But it is like, ooh, I'm raising an eyebrow at that. But then right under the Iron Cross necklace, he has a little Thor's hammer necklace. And it's like, you know, there are plenty of Nordic pagans who are not racist. But boy howdy, there sure are a lot of Nordic pagans who are fucking racist. Because, like, Western culture, uh, uh, esoteric fascism, what was that guy's name? Julius Evola, that type of shit. So, neither of those necklaces are overtly racist symbols, but they are sort of subtler things racists use to identify themselves. And both of them made me go, wow, this dude's fucking racist. I mean, maybe he isn't. Hopefully he isn't. He doesn't say anything in the movie to indicate that he's racist. Those two necklaces, man, like, one or the other, fine. I'll let it slide. Both of them, oof. Anyways, watch Heavy Trip. It's a funny movie. So last time I asked what you like to listen to for Halloween, I might have asked that last year too, but oh well. Um, I like to listen to metal. I have, like, a whole playlist of, like, metal Halloween songs. John August says uh, he listens to This Is Halloween from Nightmare Before Christmas. Absolute classic. Absolutely a, a perfect Halloween song. And then he says, uh, Mutant Museum's dramatic reading of the story 30 H's. I kind of meant music, but I do probably think I just said listening to, so... Uh, we'll, we'll accept that answer. Especially since you also put a song in there. Uh, I have not listened to this, but that sounds interesting. I will give that a listen. Good, good work, John. That was the only answer I got. So, this week my question is, what's your favorite movie that just got completely screwed upon release? Because, boy howdy, there are a lot of examples of that. Including our first film tonight... The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension. That's a mouthful. That is a long-ass title. Uh, a lot of people shorten it to just The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai, but, but we're, we're sticklers for accuracy here. This is The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension. We've got Linda Blair in Savage Streets. And finally, another street-related movie, Streets of Fire, which I think really ties the triple feature together because it has streets in the title just like Savage Streets and also it's a very similar movie to Buckaroo Banzai. So that's uh, that's our triple feature for next time. Uh, until then, happy Metalween.